Hello Year 9, this is Mr Smith here with feedback from your language and structure analysis paragraphs about Greta Thunberg's famous How Dare You speech that you submitted to me last week. Now this video is going to give you full class feedback, general points about what we've done well and where we need to focus. And I'm also going to take you through examples from about seven of our class submissions talking about what was particularly good about those. The benefit of doing this is that you get to see how you can improve your work by looking at examples of work that have excelled in particular areas and it encourages you to think about the work that you yourself have done. So rather than me tell you do X to improve, you've got to think, right, how can I best improve? And by doing that, you will actually learn more effectively and improve more swiftly than if I simply told you what to do. So. Watch along with me, make notes, and please feel free to pause at any point to really take in what's on the screen. Now, when we're writing an analysis paragraph, we will usually follow this sequence of information. Now, you probably remember the PEE point evidence explanation style of writing that you've been doing since primary school. This is a more detailed breakdown of that. And I know that you've covered this earlier in the year, it may have been a while, so it's worth going back over. We begin with the point, which is really answering the question, using words or phrases that clearly relate to the question as it was written. So basically, your opening sentence or two should make it really clear to the reader of your answer what you're talking about and why you think what you think. Terminology which is the technical terms for language and structural techniques should be included throughout your answer. And the quotations that you choose should support the point that you made and should have terminology identified within them. When we get down to the effect, when we're talking about the explaining the effect of the paragraph, then we have three points that we want to cover. The writer's intention. What did the writer actually want to achieve when they did this? Inference. Now, when we write about fiction, we'll cover show, suggest, and symbolize. With non-fiction, like a speech, then we're really focusing more on the suggests, perhaps a small amount of symbolize. But this is what we can infer, read between the lines, and take ideas and connotations from. And finally, the effect on the audience, because a speech is delivered to an audience. So, when we think about this, we think, how does the speaker want the audience to feel and react and to think? And how might the audience feel and react and to think? And it's perfectly fine to give a personal response there as well. In the example that was provided with your video lessons by Dr. Rowley, there was a paragraph written that used each of these six points. And I've color coded it. So on this side, you should be able to see how the paragraph is made up of these points. You'll notice the writer's intention is left in black, so virtually everything that's in black here is in that section, and it is the biggest dominant section of the paragraph. We open with our answer, and then what you should be able to see from here is that the quotations in green and the terminology in the sort of bright purple, they appear several times throughout the paragraph, and it's not necessarily a case of answer, then one terminology, then one quotation. So this is really more of a checklist than a step-by-step -step guide. The writer's intention, and you can see there's several questions being asked here, is the longest part. We're talking about why she's doing it and how she wants the audience to feel. The inference follows and we close with the effect on the audience because it really sort of makes sense to begin with what did the writer want? How might we understand that? And then how might the audience take it? That's kind of the process that you go through in understanding the speech anyway. As a class, your general areas of strength are answering the question with a clear point, choosing quotations that support that, understanding what the writer's intention may have been when they wrote the speech, and the overall structure of your answers. In general, the paragraphs that you wrote were well-structured, and if you wrote more than one paragraph, they developed the argument. Areas to improve, and these are pretty much in the order that we should focus on them. First of all, the inference, our ability to 
pull out those details and talk about them. Terminology, so to be able to spot particular technical terms and, and use them seamlessly in our answers. And the effect on the audience, to be able to confidently say how the audience may feel or may react. Those are the three things that we need to focus on as a class. And inference is the big focus. But what I'm going to do now is take you through a few examples from members of the class and tell you what they did really well, suggesting ways that they might improve. And you'll be able to use that to actually compare with your own work and think about what you can do to make better. Example one. So in this example, we've got a really strong opening style. This opening sentence, Thunberg ends her speech aggressively, leaving no doubt changes to in whether we like it or not. That's confident and it's clear, and I understand exactly what this uh, student is about to say. They picked up the subtext that this isn't the job of a kid to go and tell world leaders how to run their affairs. That's one of the big underlying messages of the speech. You know, why am I here doing this? This is your job. Sort it out. And the quotation is chosen. The quotation chosen here is very effective too. This would be improved by talking about more effect on the audience. You are failing us. Your betrayal. How is that going to affect the world leaders listening? How is that supposed to make them feel? And also, it would have been good to identify the terminology in use here as well, which would have added to that answer. Our next example, handwritten this time, starts with a really clear point in the middle section of the speech. Thunberg uses facts and statistics to challenge the world leaders. Now that's a great opening because it identifies where it's happening. It uses terminology to show exactly what is being done. And it talks about the effect to challenge the world leaders. That's a strong opener. This person goes on to choose a good quotation to support what they've said. And it's also... They're recognising the tone and the intention of this, that there's very little being done to support climate change and the tone is about dissatisfaction. This is not good enough. I'd improve this answer by talking more about the effect on the audience um, and the writer's intention. And really, I wouldn't change any of the points. I would just try to explain them in more detail. Example three opens with another excellent point and also embeds quotations very effectively. So we can see that the three quotes, people are dying, this is all wrong, people are suffering, are built together to support a larger point. This also shows a really good understanding of the craft of speech writing. This suggests that these are her most important points, so she really wants people to remember them. The writer of this answer understands that we front load our most important points, that we might try to shock our audience and that we might use repetition to try to really hammer home a point. Personal pronouns make the speech more personal, more engaging. So what really impressed me with this answer was the understanding of how a speech is a purposeful attempt to engage with an audience and instruct them on how to think and how to react. The big improvement I would ask for with this paragraph is the structure you really could split this into two smaller paragraphs. You could probably cut it down from about emotive language. That could work as a separate paragraph. And that would actually allow these points to breathe a little bit more. And this person would be able to develop their ideas in more detail, as well as demonstrating their overall knowledge. Example four is an example of the final paragraph of the analysis. Um, and... It makes a really good point and links to the rest of the answer too, because we can see shows her contempt toward the world leaders like she did at the start. So the third paragraph that I'm showing you here, it linked back to the first paragraph. And that's a great way of demonstrating that you've got overall knowledge. And it's, it's a quick way of saying, yeah, I've considered this whole thing. There are some good quotations that develop the point you are failing us and the use of the word choice is picked out. And that's very good because this person is clearly understanding Greta Thunberg's intention to make these people feel guilty, to criticise. And it's got a very clear understanding of the tone that Greta Thunberg was aiming for here. It would be good to see a little bit more inference here, more connections being made. And we could talk a little bit more about the intent. It's never directly said, you know, Greta Thunberg 
want these people to feel guilty. And if that were said, that, that would enhance the answer a little there. So this example starts off with a really strong point that's made very clearly straight away and it embeds quotations very clearly and very effectively from the beginning. So there's no interruption in the argument being made to introduce quotations. In fact, Greta Thunberg's words are used to support the points that are being made. There's a strong focus on tone throughout um, and keywords used like disgust, identified as emotive language, should be back in school on the other side of the, po of the ocean. To make the people in front of her feel bad, real um, understanding of the intention of Greta Thunberg's speech here as well. I would like to have seen a development of structure here. At the bottom, this final sentence could really be the opening of, of a further paragraph that would build on this one. And that might have been a time issue for this person writing, but certainly something to keep in mind in the future. Um, a little bit more about effect on the audience would have been um, if really useful too, because we can clearly see this person understands what Greta Thunberg was trying to achieve, but I would like to see that linked to what the actual impact would be. Now, this example is doing a lot of things right, beginning with a strong, clear point. There's good embedding of quotations and good understanding overall of the tone used within this speech. But what really makes this stand out is an understanding of the way that a speech works on an emotional or a psychological level. And in doing so, this person's been able to talk about both the effect and the intention in this speech in a very sophisticated way. Thunberg never openly says the words Generation Z, because that would create a level of detachment. So instead she says us, to show the United Nations that this generation is stronger and unified together. Now that is an absolutely excellent piece of analysis. It shows Greta Thunberg's intention to show a united front and to bring people along with her. It shows the anticipated effect on the audience. And it also shows a wider understanding of how speeches work and are intended to work. An answer written at this level from start to finish with that sustained level of sophistication is going to really impress any reader and it's going to make those points very convincingly. So that is a really impressive piece of writing and I want to say well done to the person who wrote this but I also want to encourage you guys to think about how you phrase and explore your ideas. And our final example begins with a clear point. Supported excellently by a quotation here that allows the writer to identify terminology and again that terminology the statistics directly relates back to the point of the consequences so it's a really confident opener this person has spotted the use of juxtaposition in my generation and your co2 and by spotting that particular feature. They've been able to talk about Greta Thunberg's intention, but also the effect upon the audience, because this is clearly designed to create a sense of guilt in the world leaders who are listening. It's approaching a symbolic level of analysis when we get down to these points here, as she makes the leaders realize the contradictions in what they say about business as usual, that it's an emotive phrase. And this speech is designed to cut to the emotional level and, and impact these people in a way that their usual rhetoric kind of skips over. So what we have here is an example of, again, a student who's thinking deeply and in a sophisticated way about the speech. If I were to offer an improvement on this one, I would say that the opening point could be developed a little bit more. So it also talks about the use of guilt on the world leaders later on and that would make this whole paragraph feel like it comes together a little bit more but the overall sophistication of this analysis as well makes it a really fantastic example for us to all look at and think about how we express our ideas and with that the feedback is complete i'm just going to leave this as the final screen again so we can see the overall areas of strength and the areas to improve that as a class that's where we are now. When you come to write your next piece of language analysis, think about the points that I've made here. Think about the examples that you've been shown and think about your own personal feedback where I've highlighted what you've done well and what you can improve. 
give a moment's thought to how you can make your next answer better than the answer you submitted this time. And with that, I want to say thank you very much to everyone who submitted. Thank you very much to everyone who's watched this and taken notes. I can't wait to read your next examples of language analysis and see the improvements that you've made. And I'll talk to you all soon. Thank you. Goodbye.